about some problems in the book that you want me to do. And I wrote them down. And I believe one of them was in seven one. And I think it was number, I think it was number nine, I think. Yeah, it was number nine and number 11. So we're asking about how do you do, how do you do number nine and number 11 on page 311? Okay, so I'll do that. I'll do that with y'all. Um, so to do those, um, they're giving you, you're given the confidence interval, okay? Uh, red m and uh, How many of y'all like m &Ms? I am not an m and uh, liker. Are y'all? Do y'all like m and Which ones do y'all like? You like the plain peanut? Well, they have a variety now, right? Plain peanut. They have the peanut butter, uh, mint, pretzel. Yeah, that's right. They have the pretzel one. Um, whole bunch, <clears throat> plain, oh, okay, plain, plain, yeah, plain, yeah, I can't eat those, I don't know, I, I, as a kid, when growing up, I never, I like candies, but, I don't know, too sweet, too sweet for me, I just did not like, I don't know, anyways, so they're giving you, they're giving you this, uh, this, uh, Confidence interval. So I'm going to write down the confidence interval. So you have 0 0.0434 less than P less than 0 0.217. Sorry, 217. And they want they want you to find pretty much they, it has it in this format, the P hat plus E. They want you to find P hat plus or minus E. What is P hat and what is I found my computer. <laughs> no, that's my twin. Uh, yeah, I was going to play y'all a joke. I was just going to put my, yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt too. <laughs> I feel like someone's staring at me. Yeah. No, it's not frozen. It's <laughs> my twin. You should pull some of his hair and put it in mine. There you go. <laughs> All right, so they want you to find P hat and E. All right, so that's our goal. We're gonna find P hat and E. So remember the, the, the leftmost number on your, your interval is the lower and the rightmost number on the confidence interval is the upper. So what you're going to use, let's see if I have it. I don't think I loaded it up. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, you're going to use this formula on page one of your handout that I had given you all for section seven one. Let me see if I can load it up. It is, okay, let me share my screen. It is right here. Here's, here's the, the page one of the uh, handout for chapter section seven one. It's way at the bottom. There they are. That's how you calculate the P hat and the E if you're given a confidence interval. So I'm gonna let me write down the, the formula. So P hat, I should have put, and I do have them in parentheses, upper plus lower divided by two and to compare. To find E, it is the opposite. It's upper, not plus, but minus lower divided by two. So you're going to use those formulas with the given uh, uh, confidence interval. So let me let me switch over. There's the formulas. I'm going to write it down on my paper, and then and then we'll do it. Very simple. So here's my here's my problem. Turn my light. Turn my light on. No. So this is your lower. This is your lower, and this is your upper. And all you do is you just substitute into your formula. So you do uh, upper is zero point twenty one seven 
plus lower is 0 0.0434. And then you divide it by two. And so let's calculate that in my calculator. So I'm going to do parentheses, parentheses 0 0.217 plus 0 0.0434. And then divide it by two. I think I did it right. 2170434. Thirteen zero point thirteen zero two is your p hat. So your p hat is thirteen zero two point thirteen zero two, and then to figure out the e, you do the same formula, but instead of a minus, you, instead of a plus, you put a minus. And that's that's it. That's that's pretty much all you do for these. Minus. 0 0.0434 divided by 2. Uh, let me calculate that. Um, let's see. Let's change that to a plus minus. Uh, I end up getting 0 0.0868. 0. 0868. That's it. That's all you do. That's all you do. That's how number nine is done. Now, 11, remember I showed you all there's different ways to write a confidence interval? Well, they don't, they don't express it as a compound inequality. They express, they can express a comp, uh, and confidence interval using uh, parentheses or interval notation. So that's how you do number 11. It's similar, it's just this, this uh, setup, uh, the given information is, is set up differently. So let me show you, let me show you number 11. So 11 written like this. Where is 11? There's 11. 11, there it is. So it's written, it's written in interval notation. Yep, the parentheses. But it's the same, it's the same, uh, it's the same confidence interval. It's just written with parentheses. So I'm gonna write down the um, confidence interval. So it's 0 0.0169 comma 0 0.143. And they want you to identify also the p hat and the e. So let me write down the formula for it. P hat is upper upper plus upper plus lower divided by two. Upper plus lower divided by two, and the e is upper. Minus lower divided by two. I'm just writing down the formula. I'm going to share it in a minute. So here's the confidence interval. Again, leftmost number. This is your lower, and the rightmost number is your upper. And you just simply substitute into the formulas. So you put 0 0.143 plus 0 0.0169 and divided by 2. That's a terrible two. And then the other one's going to be 0 0.143 minus 0 0.0169 and divided by two. Two, two, two. I said the two wrong again. 
Why is my two's not coming out today? Weird. And then you calculate it. Calculate it. Uh, parenthesis zero point one four three plus zero point zero one six nine divided by two. All right. So the first one, the, the p hat ended up. I ended up getting zero point zero seven nine nine five. And then the other one, the other one I got zero point zero six three oh five. Ooh, right on the edge. I might keep it. Oh five. Point oh six three oh five. Yep. I didn't even put any of these on your test. So, yeah, this is just from your homework. So, that's how you calculate. Uh, before we were given the P hat and the E, you can develop your, your, your confidence interval, but this one's going backwards. You want to you find what the actual P hat number was in the E uh, by given a confidence interval. So, yeah, th these, this is a confidence interval written in this format. And so is this one. So you can write your confidence interval like this, like we did before, or you can write it with parentheses. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. all right. Did that help answer those two questions that one of you ladies asked? Is that good? Okay. Do you have any other questions for me? Anything else? Anyone bring any M&Ms? Desiree, did you bring M&Ms? No pretzels. Pretzel. All right. Muy bien. Did everyone get a copy of the notes for chapter eight? Let me send it out again, because some of you came in late. Let me send it out again. I don't know why I did it the first time and it got sent. Well, when I sent it the first time, it said that it didn't get through, and then all of a sudden it got through. Weird. Weird. Okay. Being sent. And presto. It got sent successfully. Print, uh, keep, uh, save it, save it to your computer, put in your flash drive, um, make a copy of it if you want. That information, what we're going to do next is all going to be for the final. The final is not comprehensive. It is only going to cover eight and 10, only those two sections. We don't, we didn't get to go over 11. So it's only going to cover pretty much three sections for the final, only 10 questions. So it's not comprehensive, the final, but the material that we're gonna go through in chapter eight, it's pretty much everything that we've learned all condensed into one, one compact problem. You'll see, you'll see how it goes. The purpose of it is when you all take like in your sciences, you take your natural sciences, like you take, you take a, you have to take chemistry or biology, uh, those classes, you are going to be exposed to what we call hypothesis testing. I don't know, y'all have to take that. Uh, so no, we're not doing 7-3. Uh, we used to do 7-3, but they told me to take it off. Yeah, we don't do 7-3. 7-3 uh, is estimating a population standard deviation. Um, there are not that many problems out there in the real world that require that. So it's not emphasized in stats no more. I used to cover it, it was easy. I mean, easy, but it was, hey, it is what it is. So we don't, yeah, we don't do, we don't do seven three. You wanted me to do seven three? We can do seven three, one. But no, we don't do seven three. We only do seven one and seven two for this, for this course. 
Yeah. So yeah, we'll do we'll do. It's very important that you all know how to do hypothesis testing. So students say that it's hard. It's not that it's difficult. It's not difficult at all. It's just time consuming and tedious. You thought that the uh, the uh, conversions that we were doing in chapter six was long. Well, this one's going to be times ten. It's it's a long process, and I can I can tell you right now when we do one problem for now because it's it's raw. You guys don't know how to do one. It's going to take about 10, 15 minutes just to do one entire problem. But once we go through one and do another one and do another one, it'll go quick. It'll take y'all two or three minutes to do. But it, it's it's really quite easy, but you just need to know the foundations of it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to teach you all. I'm going to teach you all the foundations, the parts of the hypothesis testing, and then we'll put it all together and then do, do one problem from beginning to end. So let me show you all the parts first get you through the, through the details of what we're doing. All right, so hypothe I call it hypothesis, but it's really hypothesis. Section, we don't do nothing, we don't do nothing in, in like homework from 8.1. It's just like an introductory to, to what you're doing. So we're not gonna do any work from 8.1. I'm gonna give you guys a little handout that I use so you can, you can grasp it. They took it off from the book. I don't know why they did that. But anyways, I'm going to show you the um, what we're doing. What are we doing? Okay, vamos a hacer. What are we going to do? All right. So if you want to follow along in your book, we are on page 358. And we are covering the basics of hypothesis testing, hypothesis testing. All right, so what is a hypothesis? Many, many people say a hypothesis is a, a uh, educated guess. Yes, it is, it is an educated guess. That's what some people say, an educated But actually, the actual uh, definition is it is a claim or statement statement made about a property. Or no oh, of property of oh, sorry of a population. And what we're going to do is we're going to perform what we call a hypothesis test. Okay, so what is a hypothesis test? It is a procedure for testing a claim about a property. Property, property of a population. Okay. So think of it, think of it like this. Do you, do you all, does anyone like to watch those shows? that involve law, like law and order. Uh, Y'all like to watch those shows? You know, with, with message like the criminal investigations and your who done it type of shows. Y'all like those shows or no? 
No, no, someone just chatted. No, not the Kardashians. That is not, well, that is a criminal. <laughs> but no. Which one do you watch? If you get that, which which show do you watch? Is it the Law and Order? So you like you like that stuff. That the law. That's interesting. Criminal Mind. Oh yes, my my wife used to watch the the CSI ones. The and there was a whole bunch of them. Like they had the 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 New York one, the Las Vegas one, and I was like. Oh, I like that show. Yeah, but you know, and, and then people started like, "Oh, I want to go into that. I want to go into that uh, uh that field, the uh, forensic science field." But it's nothing. The forensic science field is nothing like the show. Nothing like the show. Maybe just a tiny bit. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, it's it's um those those that 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 um that field, the law field uses hypothesis uh, testing. So uh, have you, I don't know if y'all ever been picked for jury duty. Have y'all been to jury duty before? You all got out of it, right? Uh, one of these days, just, just, just try to get picked. Try to get picked to serve on a jury. It's a very eye-opening experience. I, I, I got, you know, I, I got served every year. Oh, this is like, I don't know why they keep picking on me, right? They kept picking on me, picking on me. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just get picked. So they picked me uh, uh, to serve on a, um, on a jury, on a, on a case. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, it was a case about this, uh, this family that had, I think they had like nine kids. Uh, the mom was on cocaine and, and, and meth. And the dad was an alcoholic. And so they couldn't, they couldn't uh, keep up tracking their kids. The kids just were out doing whatever every day, every day. And then the kids used to come home bro broken arm, you know, hurt. And, and the parents didn't do anything about it, anything. So the state took them away from them, right? Uh, and so that was the case. Do we hand over the, do we hand over the, the kids to, the parents or no sorry do we hand over the uh, kids to relatives or do we hand over the kids to the state so what do we do we gave the kids to the relatives right so then the parents were pissed i'm like why why are y'all mad we gave them to family not just you know strangers and they were just mad and so we did the right thing, uh, but yeah. So yeah, it's no. Oh, you went to you went to observe a case. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an interesting field. I mean, you you want to be a, a, a an attorney, man. You got to know your stuff. You got to know your stuff. You have to do a lot of research, a lot of research. But it's nothing, nothing like TV. I mean, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing how the uh, justice system works. But yeah, you try to do the right thing and then, you know, people still don't like what you did. But anyway, just, we did the right thing for the kids. You know, what is he thought the kids, the parents, stupid parents? The heck are y'all doing, man? If you had all those kids, take care of them. Don't be on drugs and drinking and all that. But yeah. So the the thing is when we're doing when we're doing a, you know, in the criminal case, right? Criminals. And the justice systems, right? We go back and we talk about. It. Remember when we did the Punnett Square? We did the Punnett Square, right? And and we had we had a uh, you know the false positive, false negative. Remember all that all that stuff, right? We had we had this we had this going. Yes, no, right? And these were the true. These are the true positives. This is the true negatives. This is the false positive. And this was the false negatives. Well, it also works in, in the justice system, right? So you'll, you'll see, 
you'll see these four scenarios, but not written in 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 uh, in, um, in Punnett square format. So when you go to when you do a criminal case, you can have cases where let's see, number one, the the uh, the uh, I guess the client, I guess the the defendant, I guess the person is found guilty. Because uh, evidence, because they found evidence, evidence, because they found evidence that they did were, I guess they were equal to right. They were guilty. So you proved, right? You proved, wow, you know, they found him guilty. Well, because, yeah, they, they found out he, they, they found the evidence. The evidence proved that they were guilty. Sometimes the person is found guilty because they had no evidence to prove that they were innocent. Right? You have that case where, hey, the, this person's found guilty. Hey, but I didn't have, we didn't have any evidence. Well, did you have evidence that he didn't do it? Uh, uh, no. Okay, well, then he's guilty. So you have people that are and they did they really didn't do the crime right have you heard of those cases before where there's people incarcerated for years and then later on the and later on in, in, in life oh yeah you're right you weren't found you weren't guilty and they were there in jail for like years and they didn't do it so you have you have that so that's that's kind of like a a false positive right or or you can get uh, a person, the person is found innocent, found innocent, right? Well, because they found evidence They were innocent. Right? They found evidence that they were innocent. Right, so that's good. But then you have people that the person is found innocent because they, ah, They meaning at the justice system. They had no evidence to prove that they were guilty. Right? You have people that are innocent. Uh, case, the one with the O.J. Simpson. You remember that O.J. Simpson? Yeah, you all think that he did it. Did he kill his um his ex and the and the and the guy? I think he did. I think he may have not done it. I think he may have had his friends do it, but um, but he's guilty. I think. Anyways, that's just me, right? They they found him innocent, but they didn't have proof that he was guilty. So you don't. This is this is what you don't want to get in the justice. You don't want to get this one, right? You don't want that one. And you don't want this one. You want, you want, they are found guilty because you have evidence that they're guilty. You have, or you want number three, you 
you, the person's innocent because they you showed evidence that they are innocent. But not all cases end up being cut, uh, cut and dry like one and two. Right? You'll get you'll get these often. You'll get those often, and that's what you don't want to do. You want you don't want to get these. You want to go through the trial and find them either they're guilty or they're innocent. That's that's the point. And so that's what we're going to be doing with, with these hypothesis tests. We, we want to make sure that we, we have, we want these two, right? We don't want these two, but it's going to happen. And in our field in stats, when we have evidence, we have evidence to prove that it, it's true or it's false. That's good. If you end up with these things, there might be something wrong with the study. Maybe you didn't collect enough data. Or maybe maybe there's a different path that you got to take, but you have to go back and research why did this these two events occur. You want to go back and investigate that to fix it, to get the cut cut dry ones. So that's what we're gonna do. And so when you make a claim, when you make a claim, you have to be careful when making claims. When making a claim about a, an event, you need to make sure you have the data to back up your statement. All right, so let me give you an example. Uh, I am going to claim, my claim is that the best burgers in San Antonio is Burger King. All right, there's my claim. I say that Burger King serves the best burgers in San Antonio. What do you ladies think about that claim? Is that true or is that false? Where, where is the best place to eat burgers? Is it Burger King? Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> what? Calm down, Natalie. Calm down. You don't have to yell it. <laughs> False. You mean you don't like the antenna sticking out of the hamburger when you eat it? Come on. Right. I, I just made that claim, but you're like, no, I don't like Burger King. I like, what is it, uh, Water Burger, or you like what? Um, what's the other one? Burger Boy. Have you ever tried Burger Boy? Was it Burger Boy? Have you ever tried Burger Boy? Food poisoning waiting to have, yes. <laughs> the squirts. Burger Boy. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Chris Madrid's. I heard Bigs. I've never eaten Bigs before. Uh, no, someone just said, someone just said, uh, Taqueria Jalisco. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Taqueria Jalisco. Let me write that down. Do they serve burgers at Taqueria uh, Jalisco? I'm going to have to try it. <laughs> so yeah, you. I need to have proof. So you're like, show me the proof. Show me the proof so that's what we, we want to do we want to show proof you don't want to do that in 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 the in the business area so one time uh, i don't know if you're familiar with the with the rental car companies you had avis there was avis and hertz well uh one of them put out an advertisement that said hey we have the lowest prices to offer our automobiles. So come to our 
our company, right? And it wasn't true. They did not have the lower price. There was the other, uh, the other place had lower prices. So there was a lawsuit going on. So you can't you can't make claims uh, until and unless you have proof. If you don't, you're gonna get sued and you won't get out of business. So that's the purpose of, of doing this uh, hypothesis uh, testing deal. So yeah, all right. So you don't agree that Burger King has the best drink? Well, I never. It's good, I guess. I don't know. The onion is good, but that's about it. All right. So for your hypothesis statement, your hypothesis testing, hypothesis, hypothesis testing involves uh, five steps. Five steps. Okay, so I'm going to write down the steps. So the first step that you have to do is you have to create the two hypothesis claim statements. Okay, so that's the first part which you have to do. You have to create two hypothesis claim statements. Uh, and then two, you have to um, you have to uh, how do I how do I how do I express this? You have to write down all of the Statistical values needed for or given, needed or given in the problem. Needed, given in the problem. And then three, you're going to perform the analysis and write down the results. And then four, you're going to perform a simple conclusion. To determine the final conclusion. And then you write down then you uh, uh, write down. Then state the final conclusion about the claim. Oh, I'm running out of ink. Wait. So there is a five steps that we're going to be uh, going to be doing, and we're going to tackle one each individually. That's why it takes long. I got to go through. I got to go through that. I got to go through that. I gotta go through that. It's going to seem it's going to seem overwhelming to y'all, but it's not. It's it's easy. Easy. You thought you thought chapter seven was easy. This is going to be easy too. But we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it in baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. All right. I'm gonna let you copy that first, and then I'll I'll, I'll start. We're gonna start tackling the first the first part. Mm -hmm. I'll go like that.
Ready? You have questions yet? Not yet. It's overwhelming, right? Don't worry. It's going to be easy. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, here we go. We're doing number one. Okay, we're going to start with number one. I'm going to go back to this paper later and we're going to we're going to uh, scratch off whatever we learn uh, as we go. All right. OK, so step one, I'm going to put number one. Creating. The two. Hypothesis. Statements. Okay, so when we're creating our, we'll just pin, I don't, don't want to say suck, but it's, uh, all right, let me get a new pin. All right. Creating the two hypothesis statements, all right? So you're going to have two of them. Uh, we notate them as H0 and H sub 1. The H sub 0 is called the no hypothesis. And the H1 is called the alternative hypothesis. Right, so H0, H1. Don't call it anything else, people. It's H sub 0. That's how you pronounce it. H sub zero. Don't say anything else. H sub zero. H one. So those are your two. You're gonna. We're going to write down our statements. There's two of them. One one statement will be given on the problem. You have to determine what the other one is. So I'm gonna put it here. One statement will be provided in the problem, you will have to uh, determine what the other one is. Okay. All right, so we're gonna use, we use, inequalities. Uh, we use six different inequalities. Inequalities. All right, we use, let's see if you all remember them. That, 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 and that. All right, so those are the six that we're going to use. All right, so next to them, I need to put, I need to write down what, what they are, All right? All right, ladies, what's, what is, uh, what is this one called? What's that one called? Correct. Less than, okay, the other one, yeah, that's right. The other one is greater than, uh, of course, yeah, that's equals. This one is greater than or equal, right? Equal, I don't know how to spell equal. And this one is less than or equal. And then this one has an equals with a slash across it. This one is called not equal. So make sure that you have these, these uh, terms next to the symbols. Because you're gonna you're gonna see 
you're not going to see these symbols in the word problem. You're going to be seeing these terms on there. All right. Now, let me, let me, I, I didn't, I didn't, you don't necessarily see the not equals. There's another word that they use for it. They call it a uh, different from. Different from. So not equals means, uh, the not equals means also different from. So every time I, my grandma used to tell me, you're different from the other kids. Oh, I'm not equal. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. Why did my grandma say that? Probably because of the powers I had. Anyway. You ever see the movie Omen? Bam. Bam. No bully picked on me. Son of a biscuits. Put a little power on them. Make their nose bleed. So I'm saying. Yeah. Yippers. Always got A's. Always got A's. All right. So you have you have these, <clears throat> these symbols. You have the terms that go along with them. Now we're going to put them together, right? So the statements, the statements that we're going to be working with work in pairs, right? They work in pairs. The statements, the two statements work as pairs. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you on my handout that I provided you all uh, as the setup. So let me open it up. I'm going to go to my notes that I just sent you all. Let me see if I have it. Um, shoot. Hold on. I don't think I have it. Mm. Nope. Um, okay, I have to stop it. Hold on. Let me let me stop the stop share. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get it. Eight. Okay. All right. Got it. Now I can screen share. Okay. So on the handout that I gave you all, the step one. All right. This is, this is how these statements are set up. They work in pairs. So because we're dealing with uh, in section eight to its proportion, we use the P, right? The proportion P, the, right? P starts with, P starts, proportion starts with the P. Right. So you you, we will use the variable P to represent proportion. Y'all see it? Where can I find those notes? What? No. Are you serious? Oh, okay. So go to go to um on our uh, on our Canvas page. If you go to let me see what quiet. If you go to our Canvas page, go to modules, and if you scroll down to um, where is it at? Where is it at? There is notes for set this for each chapter where it says course resources. Click on that link right there and it should be number eight, that one. That's where it's at. So go to modules, course, course resources, and it's the last one and it's number eight. Did that, did you, did you find it? Uh, where did you get that? Got it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, 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 beans. All right. So here's, here's the setup. Okay. So let me write this down. Hold on. Before, before we move on, before I show you the, 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 the uh, before I show you all the, the two hypothesis statements, I need to cover, I need to cover this part here. Uh, the variables. Uh, so these variables, notice this is proportion, right? Proportion means that I have P's as my variable. 
Notice all of them have the P's. I don't know how to draw a circle. P's. All of these P's are going to be for proportion. Should I say proportion? If you scroll down and go to section seven or eight, eight three, is it, where's my eight three? Did I pass it up? There it is, eight three. This is a claim about a mean. That means that I'm using the mu as my variable. We use mu as your variables. All the mu's. Mean, mu. Proportion, p. Right. Okay, so let me erase this. because I'm gonna need this. Oh, I don't want to freaking erase. I need to erase all this stuff. I love this thing. It's so cool. Ah, although I don't know how to erase. No, hombre. I got to erase it. No, no, no. There has to be an easier way of doing it. Okay, I gotta erase the residue. All right, cool. I think I didn't erase that part. Okay, go ahead. Good, good, good. All right, let me go back to my notes. So we use we use different um, variables. Variables use variables used in our hypothesis statement. Variables that are used in our statements all right we use we use the uh, p p is for proportion we use mu that is for the mean and if we don't cover it anymore but sigma is for standard deviation. That's what we use for our statements. So at the beginning of your statement, you'll see that P or the mu and the sigma, and then you'll see, and then after that, you will see the, uh, you'll see the inequalities that follow along with it, which I did show y'all just a while ago. So you gotta remember these, these terms, P, there's a no, notation, sorry, not, no, not terms, but notations. P is proportion, mu is mean, sigma is standard deviation. All right, now I can go back to our, our sheet. I gotta get my sheet together, people. I gotta get my sheet together. All right, so here's, here's our statement. They, again, I told you they work in pairs, all right? So you have, there are three sets of hypothesis statements that are used when we're performing a hypothesis test. They're grouped. You have a two-tail test, you have a left-tail test, and you have a right-tail test. Now, if you all look at all three sets, you just look at the H zeros, all of the H zero statements. What do they all have in common? other than the mu, look at the inequalities. They all have something something in common. All the H, H zeros, what do they have in common with the inequalities? Who can tell me? There's something in common with all three inequalities of the H zeros. Equal, bam! They all have some sort of equality to them. So you know that if, you're, if your inequality symbol has some equality in it, it belongs to the H0 statement. All right now look at the look at all of the H1s. You look at all of the H1s, all of the 
the inequality statements on them. Right. The inequality statements. These ah hold on. I'm trying to erase this. Look at the inequality statements. All of the H1s do not have an equal. There are just plain Jane greater than, less than, not equal. So any inequality that does not have an equality to it corresponds to the H1, okay? So just remember, H1, H0, they all have some sort of equality to them. The H1s do not. H zeros do, H ones do not. Hope I said it right. Did I say right? I think I said it right. All right, and they work in pairs. So notice, notice the, the entire set of the two tail. Notice the entire set for the left tail. Notice the whole entire set for the right tail. Look at the inequalities. What can you tell me about how they work together. How are they working together? They are what to each other? I'll give you a hint. What beautiful chunk plus you all are wearing today. That is a, that is a, a, what beautiful chunk plus you ladies are wearing today. That is a, anyone, anyone, anyone? It's a, Ah, uh, ah, uh. <laughs> compliment. <laughs> they are compliments, compliments. Uh, equals, the complement to equals is not equals. The complement to greater than or equal to is less than. The complement to um, less than or equal to is greater than. So they work as complements to each other. Like each of these two, these tail tests, that's how they work. So here's what you do. So you gotta, you gotta, what you're gonna have to do, ladies, what you're gonna have to do is they're going to give you an inequality statement. They're gonna give you a problem and it's gonna state an inequality. You have to locate that symbol in words and place it on the right spot. So, for example, if I said uh, greater than, where would you plot the greater than? Does it belong on the H0 or the H1? Look for the greater than. Where does it go? Greater than. For greater than. Greater than belongs in the hi. Hi, Aspen. Hi. Uh, Aspen said hi. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> greater than goes on the H1. Bam. Very good. Correct. All right. Uh, what have I? Oh, what happened? What did I do? Hombre. What have I told you all? Uh, equals. Where does the equal to symbol go? Does the equal symbol go on the H0 or the H1? I'm looking for the equals. Where does it go? Equals. Anyone, anyone? Equals, where does the equals go? Does it belong with the H0 or the H1? Hey, don't be calling me names. How dare you? <laughs> Very good. Equals, very good. All right, uh, what about, um, what about, uh, not equals. Where does the not equals symbol go? Does it belong with the H0, the H1, the not equals? You're having trouble finding H0, right? <laughs> H1, not equals, right there. The not equals belongs with the H1. 
uh, if if you had a problem that said uh, greater than or equal to go, where does it greater than or equal to symbol go? Bam, greater than or equal to. So you're going to be given a statement and you got to place it. You have to write down, first you have to write down the variable. Is it a mu, is it a P or is it a sigma? Then you write down the the uh, you have to locate the inequality symbol that's stated and the number and you place it either in the h0 or h1 and you have this guide here you have this guy this is these these inequality statements they're set you cannot change these this is set you cannot change it this is another set you cannot change the positions of where those symbols go they are set this one too these are set in stone. That's, that inequality symbol stays right there. That inequality symbol stays right there. You got to look for the terms in the problem. If it's less than or equals, you're going to put it on the H0. If it says greater than, it's going to go right there. Hold on. That's a big cat, just saying. All right, sorry. Got a little carried away with that one. Oh, got a little carried away with that one. It was just so adorable, little cat. Well, big cat. Don't be feeding it. Don't be feeding it tamales. Plug up that order in that cat. Pobrecito cat. All right, we're going to practice. That was a beautiful cat. Did you take a break of that cat? That's cute. Oh, kitty kooks. Ah, I see you. Oh, what? Someone put Hello Kitty? An overweight Hello Kitty. Hello. <laughs> Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. Nah, you ladies know what I'm talking about. The Hello Kitty. All right. Let's practice. So you have, you all have that. You all have this, right? Okay. So we're going to refer back to this page, either there or there. They're, the, they're exactly the same, ladies. This is, they're the same statements. The only difference between 7, 8, 2 and 8, 3 is the, the uh, variables. Uh, there's a sigma. There's the mean ones. And there is the P1. Okay. All right. Let me let me bring up my my uh my page. I don't think I have. I guess I can chat it to y'all. Okay. So um, do I have it? Oh, I'm gonna send it to y'all. Um, let me see if I can find it. Shoot. I don't remember what I did with it. Um, hold on. Let me see. I thought this was stable. Yes, I do. All right, uh, I didn't do a good job with it. Please, please don't get upset. Uh, I think it's upside down. But anyways, I fixed it a while ago. Let's see if it works. They took, they, they took this page out from the, from the new textbook. So I had to go back and get the old copy of, of the book. And I had to take a photo of it. I had to use a cam scanner on it. And I like I like the exercises on it on them. So I'm gonna give it to y'all too. All right, so I am looking at where is screen share? There it is. All right, so we're gonna do here's what we're gonna do. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's problems that we're going to do together. Our goal is to create our hypothesis statements based off of these sentences. Okay. So we're going to do all, all eight together. It'll take you maybe like three examples and then you'll finally get it. 
you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna say like, wow, this is easy. Yes, it is. Uh, but just bear with us. The first, the first couple of ones, they're kind of difficult. You'll be kind of like lost, but that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll get you unlost. We'll get you found. All right. So let's look at number nine. So our goal for number nine, our goal for all of them is to create our H zeros and our H1 statements. Okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to find are two hypothesis statements based off of that one sentence. All right, so you're gonna have that. We're gonna do that, and we're gonna need we're gonna need that hand that uh, sheet and the notes. You're gonna need you're gonna need this. You're gonna need oh shoot, I erased it. Well, you know what I'm talking about. You're gonna need that other paper. I don't know why it doesn't come out. Why does it want to come out? Ah uh, shoot. Anyways, all right. You're gonna need you're gonna need this uh, you're gonna need this uh, the other the other paper. You're gonna need um, you're gonna need this paper. I gonna have it. Kind of get a hard copy so you can see it. That way, I don't have to be switching back and forth, back and forth. It's a pain in the butt. Have the paper. Have the paper. Nope. Uh, I want to say Chingao. I have the I have the precalculus. Are you comfortable with precalculus? No. Okay. no, I don't have it. Son of a biscuit. Well, next time. I can't find it. I can't find it worse. Diddly. I'm trying to share that page. This one. I have to go back and forth. Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna use that in conjunction with the with the problems that we're going to be working with. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, okay. Now I gotta switch back. All right. Let me see if I can figure out my pattern. How did I do it? Stop. Bamp. Bamp. Share. All right. Here we go. Number nine, remember, we're creating our hypothesis statements. Okay, so here goes. Uh, the mean annual income of employees uh, who took a statistics course is greater than $60,000. Oh my gosh, that make, they make more money than I do in three years. What the frog? All right, anyways. All right, so let's figure out who can tell me the symbol are we are we using the mu, the p, or the sigma for our statements? You got to read the problem carefully and figure out, am I using the mu, the p, or the sigma? Which one am I going to use for number nine for my statements? Is it that one, that one, or that one? First, second, or third? First, second, or third? What am I going to use? What word told you to use that symbol? So it's going to be the mu, right? It's mu because it says mean. You know what I mean? So it's going to be the mean one. Uh, okay. So on my on my uh, my paper, I'm going to be using mu's because it says mean, right? Mean. Okay. So now I got I got my I got my uh, I got my variables. Now I have to look for the inequality symbol. What inequality symbol is stated in number nine? Is it the less than, the greater than, or equals to, the greater than or equal to, the less than or equal to, or the not equal? What does it say in our sentence? 
specifically, what does it say? Anyone, anyone, anyone? What was the question again? What, what inequality symbol is stated in number nine? Greater than. How did you know? Because it says it. Calm down, ma'am. <laughs> I detected some anger in that tone of voice, ma'am. Calm down. Chill pill. <laughs> Aspen. I've never seen this study before. All right. Less than. <laughs> All right, less than. All right, now it says, oh, sorry, it says greater than, greater than, right? Greater than, greater than, greater than, right there, greater than. All right, let's look for it. Let's look for it in our, in our sheet. I got to find the greater than, uh, shoot, okay, hold on. I got to find the greater than symbol in my papel. Greater than, where is the greater than symbol? Greater than, where would it be at? I gotta go, I gotta go to the new. Greater than, why is it not? Greater than, all right, the greater than goes where? There's six spots, one, there's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, right? Greater than. There it is. It goes right there. So under my H1 and my handout, I'm going to put the greater than, and then I'm gonna put the number that was given to me. There was a number that they uh, stated. What was that number? It was, what was it? It was 60,000. Okay, 60,000. So that's the number that I'm gonna put on my, um, on my, uh, my screen. I'm losing it, I'm losing it. 60,000. Mu is greater than 60,000. So that's what was given to me in that sentence. That line right there was given to me. Now I gotta figure out what the other one was. What is the other one? I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. You're gonna use the same number, but the inequality symbol is going to be different. What would it be? What would it be? I'm gonna stop share, click that. What would it be? What would it be? If I have greater than, that means the other one is less than or equal to. Right. So we're, 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 we're looking at this one. I spotted, I spotted my, I spotted my um, uh, greater than. And so I'm talking this, the set of hypothesis statements is called the right tail. And you write down right tail next to it. Right. It's got to be one of these sets, folks. It's got to be one of these sets. It has to be a two tail, a left tail, a right tail, just based off of that wording. It's got to be one of those. Right. And so there's there's my uh, first set of hypothesis statements. There you go. So this was given to me. Mu is greater than 60,000. The other one is the complement. Same number. Don't change the numbers. All you're going to do is just change the inequalities in the middle. There's the greater than. Opposite is less than or equal. That's how it works. I, okay, let's do number 10. Numero 10. All right, we're gonna move quickly, quickly, quickly. Ah, shoot. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. I need to unshare. Unshare. 
I'm getting confused with all these clickings, people. I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. Okay, number 10. The proportion of people age 18 to 25, that's me, who currently use illicit drugs, that's me, is equal to 0. 0.20 or 20%. Okay, ladies, what, what variable are we going to use for our statements for number 10? Is it the mu, the p, or the sigma? What do we use for this number 10 for our statements? Before when it was mean, uh, okay, Aspen, you need to go to the bathroom? I think she has to go pee. All right, pee. Very good, Aspen says pee. We're not mentioning your name, but Aspen said pee. Very good, so pee. All right, now we gotta look for the inequality symbol stated in the, in the question. 10. Who can find me the inequality symbol? What is it? Is it the less than, the greater than, the less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal to, or not equal to? Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Very good. Can you show me the equal to? Can you show me the equal to? Equal. This one right there? I don't think I can highlight it. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, yes, I can. Hello. Equal to, uh, equal to. Boom. Oh, do tell, ma'am. Do tell. <laughs> yeah, all right, you're jumping the gun and to get that. Calm down. But that's correct. Equals to. Okay, now, we're, we're okay, so we spotted the equal to. Where does it go? Where does the equal to belong to on our uh, on our handout? Where does it belong? The equals to. I need to go to the P one. I need to go P. But I need... Where does the equal to go? Does it go into H zero or H one? It goes into H zero. Very good. Equals to, all right, very good. I'm gonna switch. Uh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Equals to, I forgot what the number was. Uh, 0.2, I think. 0.2, and, and the Gita said it was a two tail. That's correct. What's the other one? If this is, if this is equals to, what would the other pair be? I want you to chat it. I want to see if you know how to chat. <laughs> not equal to. <laughs> I guess you guess you can just put not equal to, right? That's correct. It is the not equal to. So this was a two-tail, like a puppy at a nuclear power plant. It is two-tailed. Bam! Very good. It is two-tailed. Good job. Okay. We're moving along pretty well. All right, let's look at number number Juan Juan. What is number Juan Juan? Number Juan Juan is here. This is number Juan Juan. Okay, number Juan Juan. The standard deviation of a human body temperature is equal to 0. 0.62 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. What what variable are we going to use for uh, number eleven? Is it is it um is it the mu, the p, or the sigma for number eleven? Mu, p, or sigma. Remember, this one's mu. This is mean. This is proportion, and this one's standard deviation. Yes, that's correct. Standard deviation uses the O. O. All right. Now, what's the what's the uh, what's the what's the inequality symbol that we're going to use for number eleven? Oops. 
I'm gonna try uh, sorry let's try equals right equals goes on the h0 so I'm gonna put 0.62 equals 0.62 let me share this is what I have my little friends 0.62 Therefore, the other one must be not equal to 0.62. Yep, that is correct. Someone said it is a, it belongs to the two tail set. Oh, do tell, do tell, do tell. Does it make sense? Anyone lost yet? There's plenty more. More. I'm going to skip number 12. Why? I have a because... question. Yes, yes, ask me. Okay, so you're basically doing, I mean, like for the first one, it's like equal, so the second one is going to be the opposite? Yes. Okay. Yep. So whatever whatever inequality uh, symbol they gave you in that, in that sentence, you're going you're gonna, to uh, you're gonna put it in its right uh, statement either h0 h1 once you identify it then the other one's going to be the opposite so if we were given this one the opposite would be that one if you were given that one the opposite would be that one and it works vice versa you're just going to be given one statement you got to figure out what the other one is and you just got to remember that the other one is going to be the complement of the other does that make sense Yeah, you're getting it. You're adding two plus two. It equals five now, but it's going to equal four in a little bit. We're going to skip 12. You're not ready for 12. You're still little peasants. We're going to skip 12. We'll come back to 12 later. Let's do 13. Let's see if you can get You're going to get it. It just takes a while for you to get adjusted to it. It's, it's just a pattern. That's all it is. It's a pattern in recognizing the symbols the terms and the positions of where they belong. No worries. All right, here we go. Number one, three. Let's look at number one, three. Um, let me see if I can do this. Hold on. I have to be clicking. I have to click, ladies. I got to be clicking a whole bunch of places. There we go, 13. All right, here we go. The standard deviation of duration times of the old faithful geyser is less than 40 seconds. Okay, so I need to know again, what variable am I using for these statements? Is it the mu, the p, or the sigma? Hint, 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 standard deviation. Correct. Oh, can you send the link? Can you send a link to the notes? Oh. Uh, are you talking about uh, um, hold on. What are you talking about? This one then? That one? Is that one it, um, Desiree? No, yes, no, yes, no. Wait, which one? I'm the talking one about the, the one with the H1 and H0. The, the one that I just said right now? That one? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about uh, the one with all the, the problems. The one. <laughs> uh, 
Quickly. <laughs> no, H1 and H0. Okay, the one that you so download, right? The one that you download. Did you get it right now or no? I, I put it in the chat. No, I don't see it. You don't see it? Okay, okay. Go go to go to our go to our um go to our canvas page and then go to go to our modules tab and then scroll down in the middle where it says uh course resources. That last link where it says course resources, that's where it, it has a notes on stat disk. Let me show you again. Hold on. Let me see, let me see. Uh right here. Uh wait, let me see. Do, 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 do. Okay. I see right here. Right here, Desert Watch. Go to go to our oh, go to modules right there. Modules and then scroll down to uh, course resources. And it's gonna be this this tab right here. No it's for set this for each checker. It's number eight, that one. And you can download it. That's the one, right? All right. <laughs> Sorry, I sound like a tigger. Okay. Thirteen. Mm. What is it saying? What is it saying that? Okay, let me share it. 13. All right, there you go. So 13, um, standard deviation. So my, my statements are going to have the O, right? O because it's standard deviation. All right, you ladies tell me what what is the specific uh, inequality symbol that's stated in number 13? It says it's explicitly, right? It says right there, less than, right? So you have the less than, it says it less than. It doesn't say less than or equal to, right? It just says less than. All right, so it says less than. So I'm going to go to that note that I have, and I'm looking for less than. I need to find the sigma. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to share my screen. Okay, I've got to go and find my sigma. Where's the sigma at? All right, less than. Uh, I need to find from the six. I need to find the less than. Where does it? Where does it belong? Does it belong with the H zero, H one? Less than. Less than. There it is. Oh, right there. Less than. Less than. Now, the problem didn't say less than or equal to. It has to say it explicitly on the sentence. It's got to say less than or equal to in order for it to belong right there. But it doesn't. It only says less than. So I'm going to write down my statement and I'm put sigma less than, I forgot what it was, 40 seconds? I think it was 40 seconds. I'm not too sure, I don't remember. I think that's 40 seconds, right? And so the other one has to be the opposite. If it's less than, it's gotta be this one. So I'm gonna put uh, greater than or equal to 40 seconds. And you see, that this whole, the, the whole uh, hypothesis statements comes from this set. It belongs to the left tail. You spot, you spot your given, you locate the symbol, you write down the statement, and then you look at the opposite, and that whole set represents your hypothesis statement. Does that make sense now how it works? It's cheesy and easy. And we're only doing step one, people. 
there's like five other steps. <laughs> I know. I'm the only one laughing. Sorry. <laughs> the only one laughing. Some of you are saying Chingao. I know. It's all right. You can say it if you want. Me, Moto. All right. So this is what I have. This entire. Is it at? I think it was forty. I think it was forty seconds. I think it was forty seconds. I don't remember what it was. I was supposed to look for it, but y'all, y'all, got me distracted. I think it was forty seconds. No. Yeah, it was forty seconds. Booyah! Okay, I remember. Okay, forty seconds. Got scared. I got scared. It that is what it is. Is anyone lost yet? You need to let me know. I'll explain it to you. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Because if you if you get if you mess up the statements, the whole problem is going to be wrong. So it's imperative that you get these statements down pat. Because the other stuff is, is a cinch. It's it's this part that's the difficult part. All right, we got two more or three more. Um, let's do 14. Let's see if I can find 14. Oh, 14 is oh, the next page. The standard deviation of daily rainfall amounts in San Francisco is. 0.66. Okay, so this is standard deviation. So I'm going to use the O. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, sorry. O, O'Reilly Auto Parts. Who can tell me the, um, what is the, um, What's the uh, inequality symbol that's stated on here? What is, what is, what is the meaning behind is? What is is? What is is? Is it less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equals, less than, or not equal? What is is? Correct. Someone said it was equals. That is correct. Is means equals. Very good. All right. So let's find out where does it equals to below. I know it's O. Where does it equals to belong? All right. Let me see. Stop share. It's a pain in the butt doing this thing. There's got to be an easier way of doing it. Okay, all right, here we go, here we go. I'm looking for, I'm looking for equals. There it is, bing, there's equals right there. It belongs with the HRI, so that, this is gonna be this one. I spotted it. So it's gonna be equals to, oh, I forgot what the number was. Oh. I forgot what the number was. Therefore, the other one must be not equals. Okay, so I have equals. I have not equals. It's a two-tailed test. All right, I just need to write down the numbers. Uh, what was the number? Oh, 0. 0.66. Thank you. Que linda. Muy bien. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Ah, you're a pro at Sindicata. Muy bien. On a roll. Oh, I don't know how to erase. All right, very good. All right. Um, all right. So this is what I have, and this is my statements. Mu, sorry, sigma is 0.66, therefore the opposite is not equal. All right, 15. Almost there, almost there. 
Let's look at 15 people. 15. Coming, coming, I'm coming. 15, all right, there you go. Oh, there's 16, son of a bitch. Where did that one come? All right, here we go. Uh, 15, Six. The proportion of homes with fire extinguishers is, is uh, 0.80. All right, so proportion, that is going to represent a P, right? P, so they all have Ps. I'm looking for the word is. We just said is was what? Is is equals. So it belongs in the H zero is, right? Equals. I gotta find it. Is. Stop is. 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 No. Is. Sorry, I'm fighting with myself. Is. Oh, I'm talking about the wrong one. Ding how. I'm getting confused, ladies. I'm getting confused. I'm trying to get the right thing and I can't. Okay. Cool. Proportion. Equals. There it is. There's my equals. It belongs right there. Boom. Right there. Bing. I'm going to put a little check mark. So that's this one. It's going to be a two-tail test. Two-tail equals, and then the other one's going to be not equals, and I just need to put my number. I forgot what the number was. But anyways, I will find it. Oh, great. I think I, I, think I lost the page. Son of a biscuit. What the fuck? No, no, there it is. No. Oh. Point 0.80. Son of a biscuit. Point 0.80. It's point 0.80. Point 0.80. Sixteen. 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 Oh. Sixteen. Right, 16, the mean weight of plastic discarded by households in one week is less than one kilogram. Okay, so uh, this is saying mean. So I'm gonna use the mu, right, mu, and it says less than, mu, less than. All right, we gotta find mu and less than in my notes. Mu, less than. Mu less than, where is that? Put my mu at the bottom. Can erase. I'm sorry, we don't know how to forget this. Okay. Mu less than, less than, I'm looking for less than, less than, less than, less than, go, who's the less than? There it is, less than, bing, less than, it's this one. All right, so I'm gonna put mu less than, whatever the heck the number is, and then the other one must be mu is greater than, oh, one kg, one kg. And this is a left tail. All right, 
But you have to you have to read the problem, identify the variable, and then identify the inequality symbol. And you gotta spot it. Find it among the six of them of that of the ones that we have with inequalities. You spot it, you put a check mark and then circle your set, and that way you know what the opposite one is. I didn't think about that. All these years I've been teaching this class. I should have just done that. Oh, oh I amazed myself. Anyways, yeah. K cosines. K cosines. Are you guys experts at these now? Are we? Okay. All right. So the secret, ladies, the secret is. You need to, you need to read. Very important. Need to read. <laughs> I know, I'm kidding. I know how that's spelled. It's need to read. So they went to public school. That's right. Need to read. All right, we got to do one more. The one that is difficult, ladies, is number 12. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if you all can figure out numeral 12. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Where's the problem at? Okay, hold on. Number 12, let's see. Number 12 reads, no, 12 is, right. the majority of college students have credit cards. The majority of students have credit cards. All right, ladies, what variable are we going to use for our statement? Is it the mu, the p, or the sigma? I always like that word, sigma. Which one is it? For number 12. Take a guess. You get it wrong, we'll just laugh at you hysterically. What is the variable that we're going to use for number 12? Ah, you guys are close. Nope. Nope. It's not me. Try again. Try again. Try again. It's not, it's not the mu. You're close. Not the mu. Try again. The majority of college students have credit cards. It is P. It's going to be the P. All right, so it's P. And I need to know what is the inequality symbol that's stated in number 12. The majority of college students have credit cards. What is this? Oh, snap, there's a circle. Okay. Good to know. Yes. Interesting. All right. So the key word is the term majority. All right. Now, how do I explain it? Okay, so let's say let's say that you vote and there's two candidates running for a position in office, right? And one, one candidate has the majority of the votes, which means that that person wins the election because they win the majority. Does anyone know what majority means? How does a candidate, how does a candidate win? Right, a candidate wins by 
having 50% or more votes. So majority, you guys may want to write this down, but majority means greater than 0.5. I can't draw five word theory. That's what majority means. Greater than 0.5. They have more than 50% of the votes. That's how a candidate wins. They got to win the majority of the votes. So if you, you ladies ever hear the word majority, oh, they got 50% of the votes or more. All right, so I'm looking for the greater than, and I'm looking at my P. Huh? It's yellowish. Well, I'm looking at P and I got to find greater than 0.5. Does it belong to the H0 or the H1? Let's find out. I'm looking for the. Do, 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 do. I got to share it. Golly, this thing is such a pain in the buttocks. I keep switching it back and forth. I bet your eyes are all glowing from all the switching. Sorry, ladies. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I forgot to erase that. Sign on the biscuits. P. Let's look for P. Yeah, let's look for P. Gross. I'm looking for greater than. Greater than. Greater than goes. Where is the greater than symbol? Greater than. And not greater than or equal to. It says greater than. Just strictly greater than. There it is. It goes there. There's my set. I'm going to put greater than 0.5. Because it's proportional. When it says majority of, you're talking about a proportion. You're talking about a percentage. So anytime, anytime you hear the word uh, majority, that is proportional to uh, a percentage. Good question. Why is it pee? Because <laughs> when you drink water, that's what happens when your kidneys. I'm kidding. Yeah, it's pee. So always pee. Majority is pee. So majority belongs under the category of proportion. Joy. I don't know how. To... Wow, wow. I can spell. I'm gonna have to write, I'm gonna have to use this little majority. Wow, nice. Look at that penmanship. I should use this often. This is a right tail. Majority. Questions, ladies? You have you you have to I to be honest with you, I think you have to print this this document. You have to print it. You have to print it because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to use that to to determine where that inequality symbol belongs at now you don't you don't have to go through like i did and i had to scroll and find the mu and the and the sigma and the p because the, all the sections are 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 categorized a2 is strictly all proportion so you don't have to go and scroll all of a2 is proportion all of a3 is mean and we don't even do 8.4. So we don't have to do 8.4. It's, we don't. We just do 8.2 and 8.3. So we only do P's or mu's. That's what we do. We just do P's and mu's. You all just have to, you gotta, you gotta find the inequality symbol. You, you place it in its spot where it belongs, put a little check mark, and then circle the set. And that way you know. 
uh, what the other one is because they work in pairs. You just have to find that one, that one inequality, spot it, check it, and then you have you have the room. So let you know. So you, it, it's going to be these these uh, this exercise was kind of hard because it was all mixed, all mixed. But you have it all made in the shade because it's all. It's not organized for y'all, so you don't you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. All right, so let's let's uh <laughs> let's summarize. What where are we at on the list? Where are we at on the list? Let me show you where we're at on the list. We are. You are. You are here. <laughs> We've only done one. One of the five steps. Oh. <laughs> yes, go ahead and press all you want. Ching. Oh. Yeah, we've only done that. That is the most critical, critical part of the whole process is number one. Number one. Number two is a cinch. So here's what we're going to do next. We're gonna do a problem from the book. We're gonna wing it, ladies. We're gonna wing this. We're gonna do steps two and three together. We're gonna to do one, two, and three. One, two, and then we'll we'll, we'll continue on after after you get steps one, two, and three. Then I'll show you the last step. The last steps are real. They're they're not they're not easy. They're not difficult. It's eh, it's there. But two and three are simple, all right? So let's do, we're gonna write down all our information and, and it de it's dependent on which particular section that you're working on will determine step two. Step three, again, that's all dependent on what section you're working on. Uh, it'll, it'll tell you on your handout that I gave y'all or y'all printed it out. Okay, so let me show y'all. So we're gonna do a problem on, on we don't do any exercises in 8-1. There's no exercises in 8-1. That, that problem, that, that set of problems that I just did, that was really from 8-1, but it's not there no more. So we don't do anything in 8-1. We're gonna just start in 8-2. So let's, let's see, you're gonna get it, don't worry. It's, it's overwhelming now, but yeah, you'll, you'll get it. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's see if I can find it, my book. All right, we're gonna go to page 382, three, ah, what's that? 382, all right, okay. We're gonna pick, we're gonna, I'm gonna let you ladies pick one. All right, you tell me which one interests you all, okay? Um, McDonald's, do you want to do McDonald's? Uh, do you want to do stem cell survey? Oxycodone, that's some good stuff. Survey return rates, lie detectors, or Uh, I forgot what the other one was. 21, touch therapy. Yeah, touch therapy. Cell phones and cancer. Super Bowl wins. Overtime rule in football. Which one interests you all? Pick one, it doesn't matter. Okay, someone said oxycodone. Why? Why do you want me to do oxycodone? Okay, we can do oxycodone. Not literally, but yeah, we can do the problem, not, not actually do that. Not actually do that. Yeah, that's, that's very addictive. Am I right? Is that, that's stuff addictive, right? I don't do that. Yeah, they asked me, like, what happened? What happened to me? Oh yeah, my, uh, I was cleaning the goldfish tank uh, and it's made out of glass, right? And so I'm cleaning it and it just shatters, just 
it just shatters and the and the glass fall right on my wrist right on my and it cut my wrist really deep and so i had to go to the hospital and they had to stitch it up and it's funny because when i went to the hospital and i had this gash on my wrist and the nurse comes up to me and said do you need to talk to someone talk to someone about what you know because your wrist like no ma'am i wasn't trying to kill myself the stupid fish were trying to kill me <laughs> and so they were they stitched me up and they said you want some oxycodone i was like nope that thing was addictive so yeah so yeah that that drug is pretty tough okay so here we go the drug oxycodone is used to treat pain, but it's dangerous because it is addictive and can be lethal. In clinical trials, 227 subjects were treated with oxycodone, and 52 of them developed nausea. What a beautiful name, nausea. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of oxycodone users develop Nausea. All right. So the first step you do is we are going to we're going to write down our hypothesis statements for number thirteen. All right. So there's step one. We are going to write down what my H zero and my H one statements are. Okay. Now these problems are going to be long. And so you're going to be like, well, where do I find the hypothesis statement, right? All of them, all of them have a pattern. To find it, you got to find the word test the claim. If you can spot though that those terms test the claim right after that, they're telling you the hypothesis statement. So if I look through my problem, I'm looking for the words test the claim. Do y'all see it? Where's the terms test the claim at? Test the claim that. Bam, there it is. Test the claim that. Right after the word that, it says what? More than 20%. All right, so and then you're going to ask, well, how do you know it's proportion? Well, what kind of a number is 20? 20 is a percent, which is a proportion. So these are going to have P's. And I'm looking for the word more than. What inequality symbol has more than? Let's see if you guys can spot it in my notitas. I'm looking for more than in my handout. More than, I need to erase this. More than. More than, where is more than? More than, what happened there? Wait, yes. More than, more than. Uh, there it is. More than, right there that one All right so i'm gonna put i'm gonna put uh for my h zero it's going to be less than or equal to 0.20 and my h1 is going to have a p greater than 0 0.20 and i'm going to write down right tail not a white tail that's deer but i'm going to write down right tail Sorry, I'm writing the word more than with the little arrow. Does that make sense? So this is what I have for my um for my notes, my paper. Bam. Right. And what you do is you write, you put a you put an asterisk, all right. You're going to put an asterisk on the line that was given to me originally in the problem. What was what was originally told in the problem? It was it did it say less than or equal to, or did it say greater than? Did it say more than? 
it said more than. So this, this line right here was given to me originally in the problem. So you're going to put a star. I'm going to put here, put a star on the statement given originally in the problem. Always put a little star, all right? It, we were told, we were told more than, so that's where it goes. You put your star there, okay? All right, now we're ready for step two. Okay, so for step two, we're going to look at on my sheet. All right, let me erase, let me erase all this stuff. You don't need that anymore. All right, now we're ready for step two. We already did step one. Step one is done. All right, now step two, we're gonna scroll down on my notes. I can erase. And I'm going to look for these, these, uh, these one, two, three, four, four numbers. I'm going to identify these numbers in the problem. And when we go to stat disk in a minute, we're going to use stat disk. I'm going to show you. There's a little. There's a little window that you're going to have to click on, and I'll tell you what what you're supposed to do. Which one you're supposed to click on on the menu drop down bar there's going to be a little menu drop off down bar i'll show you what to do but for now let's let's write down these you're going to find one two three four numbers let's write them down we got to find my significance i gotta find my claim proportion i gotta find the sample size that's my N, and I got to find the number of successes. That's your X in jail. Right. So we're looking for these four items, and then I'm going to put above that, I'm going to put a little menu, a little, little box. It's going to be a little menu key. I'm going to show you in a minute uh, what to look for. All right. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for we're looking for these four things in the problem. Let me let me share it with you. Share. This is what we're looking for. For step two, we're looking for significance, claim proportion, sample size, number of successes. You're going to be doing this in section seven, eight, two, eight, two. They're all going to be like this. All right. We're going to find these four numbers. All right. Let's go. Let's go to the. Let's go to the problem. And we're going to find those numbers. Some of them are kind of obvious. You will know automatically which what they are. And one of them you probably will like. Huh? Where do I get that number? We'll see. We will see. All right, ready? Steady, steady, steady. All right, what is your significance number? Who can find it for number 13? Significance. I'll give you a hint. You gotta look for the word significance. Uh, I don't want to laugh about that anymore. That was so awkward. Yep, right there. Your significance is 0 0.05. So that's your significance number, 0 0.05. You just look for the word significance right after it or before it uh, is your significance number. All right. Um, I'm going to skip claim proportion for now. Who can find me the total number of people? That is your sample size for number 13. What is the total number?
Nope, not, okay, not 227. Close, oh, you're so close. <laughs> you're so close, not 227, you're close. There's another, another number that goes with it, right? Because, because 227 were the ones that were treated, right? Oh yeah, you're right. It is two two seven. My, I'm sorry, Enriqueta. Hijo, qué malo. You're right. It is two two seven. Yeah, yeah. No, I can hear you. You see? <laughs> you're right, man. It is two two seven. Qué cosas. Ah, uh, made you doubt yourself. You're right. It is two two seven. What is what is the number of successes? What would that number be? We want the ones that develop nausea. What a beautiful name. I think that next, I, I named our uh, our uh, iRobot, iBot, the one that cleans the, uh, you know, cleans, we, we named her Nausea. What is the number of successes? Number of successes are the ones that developed Nausea. What is it? That is correct. 52. Now, now Enriqueta doesn't want to answer no more. I'm sorry. It was Desiree's fault. All right, 52. 52 and 227 is your N and your X. All right. So again, you have to just, you just, you just, uh, all you have to do is just uh, extract it from the problem. It, it's fairly easy. Fairly easy to find these three numbers, right? Fairly easy. Now, the one that we're going to have difficulty with is this one. Claimed, claimed proportion. I didn't write it right. Claim proportion. Claim proportion. All right, you're going to wonder, where do you get that number, sir? I didn't see it in the uh, problem. Yeah, it was there. It was there. It was the number that was used in our hypothesis statement. So that number will always be the number that you use for your hypothesis statement. These 0. 0.20. So just remember, the claim proportion is always the value that's used in your hypothesis statement. Number used in Hypo thesis statements. That's what that number is. Boop. Always. All right. So now you got all four. You got your significance. You got your claim proportion. You got your sample size. You got the number of successes. Right. Now you are ready for stat disk. I'll show you in a minute what to choose for your drop-down menu key after I show you StatDisk, all right? So on StatDisk, here's what you do. Uh, you are going to go to analysis, hypothesis testing, proportion one sample. You're gonna follow these arrows on StatDisk. Analysis, hypothesis statement, proportion one sample. That's what step A2 is. All right. So let me let me load it up. Let me load up stat disk. And I'll show you where to go. You go to analysis. Analysis. Hypothesis. Proportion one sample. Again, we're doing this for A2. All the ones in A2 are going to be proportion. No yawning. Click it. And there are the four numbers that I told y'all uh, that we had to extract. So I'm gonna I'm gonna type those in. Hold on. 0 0.05. 0 0.20. Two two seven and fifty two. Okay, you're gonna enter those numbers into that disk. 
and we're going to have to make sure that we collect the or, or use select the right drop down menu button right above where it says significance right so if you click on it you're going to have three choices one two or three you choose the one that you have uh for your h1 whatever your h1 symbol is is the one that you select for this drop down menu it's always the h1 symbol whether there's a star on it or not you always select whatever the h1 symbol is so our h1 symbol had a greater than so i'm going to select the greater than just to show you you are going to use this always always the h1 symbol so we're going to use the greater than always always h1 symbol if you don't pick the right one this whole thing is going to be a mess it's it's going to be wrong so you always want to make sure that this menu bar matches your h1 again you see how i have a star it doesn't matter whether the star was there or not if the star was there you still pick that symbol on that box always always that one the second one always So that's step two. Okay. Changing this, cleaning this, that's what step two is. Now you're ready for step three. Can you show how to get to this page again? Uh, on the on the side disk? Yeah. Okay, you go to analysis, you go to hypothesis testing, and you pick proportion one sample. So analysis, hypothesis testing, and then proportion one step. All good? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Now for step three, all you have to do is hit evaluate. And you're gonna write down, you're gonna write down all of these four items don't copy the top or the bottom you're going to copy that center box as it appears you just copy it down word for word number by number just copy it you don't have to round it you don't have to do nothing there is no rounding involved people in this chapter no rounding at all no rounding at all and you write it down i'm going to write down everything what i what I have here, I'm gonna write sample proportion, sample proportion, you just copy it down. Sample proportion is 0 0.22907. You write down the test statistic, 1.09, you write down the critical Z, you write it down 1.64485, and then you write your p-value. So that's all you do for step uh, three. You just copy it. Copy the center block of the results. The end for now. This copy. I hear birds chirp. Sorry, that was me this week.
Okay, so this is what I have. Let me show you what I have. So on my paper, on your final, this is what we want to see. I want to see, we're going to see all of the steps. You got to, on your final, you got to write down, you got to show all three, all five steps. You got to show every step because each part is going to be worth two points. That's two points, that's two points, that's two points. And don't, don't go to a cons academy or you go to a website uh, because they don't show you these steps. They show you how to do the graduate level. That's not, that's not how we want you to learn. We want you to learn it undergraduate. To, to fully understand the graduate level, you have to understand the undergraduate. So we expect you to do that, 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 and then four and five. You're going to do that for all the problems. You're going to show all the steps. You don't have to write all the, all the little comments, but you're going to, you're going to do, you're going to put your, your hypothesis statement. You're going to do step two. You're going to draw your little window. You're going to write down significance. You're going to, you got to be detailed, all detailed, and you're going to write all that. You're going to do that for all the problems, for your homework and on your finale. You're going to do that. Okay. I told you this was going to take us 45 minutes <laughs> just to do one freaking problem, right? And, and that's up to step three. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put uh, to be continued, right? Because we still have to do step four and step five, which you guys are not ready yet. I'm, I can already smell your brains frying just from these three steps. You gotta feel comfortable with, with these three steps first before you're confident enough to do step four and step five. You gotta feel comfortable. If you can get, if you can nail these three steps, four and five is gonna be a breeze. Okay? So we're gonna just do, we're just gonna do one, two, and three for now. We're gonna do two more problems like that. And then we'll come back to number 13 and then we'll finish we'll finish step four and step five, all right? So I just, want, I just want you to be able to get up to here for now, okay? Want you to feel comfortable. Ask questions, is there, is there a step? Is there a step that you're lost at? I, I already know that you guys, I think you, I think you maybe about 80% of you are comfortable with this part. Maybe, maybe about, 70%, I know you all know how to get that. You know how to get the, the reds. Just remember that the plain proportion is the number that you use for your statements. And then the drop down menu uh, button, button, you always select whatever your H1 symbol is, always. Because there's only three, you only have three. It, it only has not equals, greater than or equals to, and those are the only ones that are used in H1. There is no less than or equal to. It's just less than, not equal, greater than. That's why you only choose H1. All right, so there's, there's 13 for now. We'll come back to that one later. I'm gonna save it. Coming back soon. All right, let's do another one. I want you to pick one. We did 13, that's oxycodone. That was some good stuff. I'm gonna need some oxycodone after this. <laughs> Y'all know anyone? Y'all know anyone? That, that, never mind, better not ask. Okay, I thought maybe I knew someone who, never mind. Uh, what else, which, which other one? Pick another one, ladies, pick another one. Pick another one, we'll do it from beginning to end. You'll get it. Right now, right now it's kind of raw, but it's gonna be the same pattern over and over and over and you continue to do the same steps over and over it's it's a long process but you get it done pick one anyone or you want me to pick you want to pick or i pick we did 13 already pick an odd one from from uh, nine through i believe nine through 26 Seven, I think. Yeah, nine through twenty-seven. We already did thirteen. Pick another one. Anyone, anyone, or I pick. 
What do you think? Okay, you want to do the lie detectors? Fine, let's do the lie detectors. Number 19, all right, number 19. All right, here we go. We're going to do step one. All right, let's read, let's read the, uh, let's read the problem first, and then we'll identify the hypothesis statement. Trials in an experiment with a polygraph yielded, yield 98 results that included 24 cases of wrong results and 74 cases of correct results. Uh, use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that such polygraph results are correct less than 80% of the time. All right, all right, ladies, because I already located the uh, hypothesis statement. Did, did y'all find it? Did y'all look for the word test the claim that? I can't, I can't, um, I can't highlight, there it is. There it is, test the claim that, uh, all right, less than 80, less than 80. All right, so I'm using P. I'm using the P again, because it's proportional. 80, 80 is a percent, proportional. What inequality symbol is stated? It says less than, right? Where does the less than symbol go? Does it go in the H0 or the H1? Less than, where it is less than? Less than. Here, 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 there, there, there. Where, where, where? Where is the less than? <laughs> there it is. Bam, less than. All right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Left tail. Hi. Thank you, Hendiketa. I already said hello to you. Left tail high. <laughs> Left tail high. That sounds like my dog. Her tail is high. Oh, that means she has to go to poo poo. All right. Less than. <laughs> Less than. I forgot what the number was. Was it point four? Team how? Yeah, it was, it was point four. <laughs> How in the world did I get a sticker in my book? Okay. Um, yes, that is correct. Um, it was 80, not 40. It was 80. There's a sticker in my book. Oh, a sticker. Okay, 80, it was 80, I'm sorry. It wasn't, it wasn't 40, it was 80. All right, so point, point 80. All right, point 80, all right. So look, look at my sheet, this is what I did. Look, this is what I did, I put, I also put left tail on it. Left tail. Um, this is what I did. I wrote down uh, point 80. Left tail. I'm gonna put an asterisk because that's what was given to me in the, originally in the problem. So therefore, the other one has to be greater than or equal to 0.8. So there's my there's my hypothesis statements. Who is lost right here? Anyone lost on this step right there? Let me know. I need to know. I need to know. We can clarify it. I don't mind. I don't mind. Just tell me. Are y'all comfortable with that step? Que si, que si, que no, que no.
bueno. <laughs> As my grandpa used to say when he answered the phone, bueno. All right. And we're going to write down, I got to draw for step two. Now we're ready for step two, people. All right. So I want to write my significance. My claim. Proportion. My sample size and my number of successes. I actually wrote right today. Look at that. You can actually read my writing. Ah, I know I'm a male. Calm down. Calm down, ladies. All right. So I'm looking for I'm looking for these. Now before before I find these these uh four numbers, what do I select for my drop down menu? What do I pick? I'm going to pick my H1. I'm going to make sure that that H1 symbol is that. So when I go to my stat disk, I need to make sure I click on that and then I can enter all the numbers as they go. All right, so I'm gonna go, I gotta find these other four numbers. Let's help me find them. Help me find them. Help me find them. Help me, Rhonda. Help me, help me, Rhonda. All right. What is your significance? Mine's teaching right now. <laughs> My significance. What is your significance number? Who can find it? Who can find it? Who can find it? Who can find it? Significance. I don't see it. Where is the significance? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good eyes, ma'am. Good eyes. You got eyes of a bat. Eyes of a bat. No, I'm kidding. Bats can't see. They're blind. Yeah. Okay. She's got good eyes. She eats a lot of carrots. Thank you, Aspen. All right. Claim proportion. What is your claim proportion? Remember, it's the number that we use in our statements. It is 0.80. Right? Do, 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 do. Sample size. What is our sample size? What's our total? Ah, correct. Someone said 98. Okay. Now, number of successes. What are we, what are we, what are we trying to find the results of? The correct or the wrong? Go back to your hypothesis statement and let's see what they say. We want the results that are correct. So I need the, num the total number that were correct, which is what, the 24 or the 74? Ah, 74 were correct. So that 74 is my success. Success, success, success. 74 correct because it says correct you want the correct 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 all right you're ready i'll give you guys some time to write down what i have let me share what i have this is what we have so far this is what we have we got that we got that i changed my I need to make sure that I change the menu drop down to less than, and I'm gonna type all those numbers in. I think we're ready for step three, ladies. Here we go. Let's plug them in like a Glade air freshener. Uh, where is it at? Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so there's my, Hypothesis test is proportion one sample. I need to make sure that I change this to a less than. So it is number three. All right, there's the less than. I changed it. I put the 0.05. I'm going to put the 0.80. I put the 98. And I'm going to put the 74. 
Make sure that you typed everything in. That's correct. Less than 0 0.505, 80. 38, 34. Copy, plagiarize, whatever you call it. I'm going to copy it. Sample, proportion, test, statistic. Critical Z and P value. And I'm just going to copy the numbers as they appear exactly. 75510, oh, negative 1.1111. Seven, that's weird. I've never seen that number before. We're negative 1.644. 85 and 0 0.1332 single. Okay, someone just handed it to me, sir, what would happen if I didn't pick the right uh, symbol for the drop down menu? Well, let me show you. If you did not, you're going to get totally different numbers. Look. You get you get totally off. Well, some of them are the same, but um, I, I, that's the same. That's the same. The bottom two are incorrect. You see, they're they're incorrect if you chose the wrong one. If you chose that one, see, the last two come out wrong. First two are right, but the last two are wrong. So make sure make sure that you select. Your right drop down menu key. <clears throat> cool. Questions? Lost? Found? Okay, so this is what we have so far. We've only done step one, two, and three. We need to do one more. And then I'll show you how to do step four and five. We'll have time. Oy. Stretch. Okay. All right, so there's 19. I'm going to put to be continued. We'll come back to it in a minute. I'll let you copy it first. Copy, copy. Hmm. Who's getting rain? Okay. There's 19. I'm going to keep it. All right. Pick one more. We're going to go quicker. It's going quicker now, ladies. It's going quicker. It's a quicker picker upper. We're going quick, quick, quick. All right. Pick another one. We did 13, we did 19. Pick one more. Which one would you like? Come on, pick one. Anyone, anyone, anyone pick one. Just give me a number. Even if you have to whistle it or, or uh, Morris code it, something. Give me a number. What's your favorite number? Natalie, what's your favorite number? Desiree, what's your favorite number? Go to the next page. How dare you? <laughs> Go to the next page. Okay. Uh, ah, 24. Well, all right, 24. Let's do 24. It's even. That's odd. Can we do 23 instead? Desiree, you don't mind? I know 24 is your favorite number. Okay, we did 23 because that's a homework. Good move. That's correct. Oh, she just threw the finger at me. Nice. <laughs> Come on, I love Desiree. We're family. You went to legacy. All right, here we go. 23. That's a good one. All right, 23. Uh, all right. 
Let me read it. Okay, it says in a study of 420,095 Danish cell phone users, 135 developed cancer of the brain uh, or nervous system. Test the claim of a somewhat common belief that such cancers are affected by cell phone use. That is, test the claim that the cell phone users develop cancer of the brain or nervous system at a rate that is different from the rate of 0.0340% for people who do not uh, use cell phones. All right, so let's look for the keyword. We're looking for the word test the claim. I know these are P's because the this number is a percentage, right? Uh, okay, so um, I'm looking for the inequality symbol. Let's see who can find it. There's the test the claim, but what's the inequality symbol? Is it less, say less than, greater than? What word are they using? There it is. Different from, what is different from mean? What is different from mean? Okay, let's go back to my, my uh, homework, my little sheet. Where's my sheet? Gotta get my sheet together. Different from not equal. Not equal. You remember what my grandma used to tell me? Mijo, you're different from the other kids. Is that a good thing, grandma, or a bad thing? She didn't respond. That's me. Okay. Different from not equal. On, can it turn away? Okay, different from. I need to write. I need to write down the number. What was my number? Oh shoot! I gotta change this number to a decimal. Dang it! Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to change zero point zero three four zero percent to a decimal. Okay, so let me let me share my screen. So this is what I'm gonna do, ladies. Some of you had trouble with the converting uh, uh, percentages to decimals. So here's here's the percentage, right? So what I what I do is this percent symbol. It's like a hundred. You see it? You see the one the zero zero? That's how they make the percent symbol. It's over a hundred. Ah, uh, I just made that up. So you get this point zero three four zero, and you just divide it by a hundred in your calculator, right? And it'll give you zero point one two three three four. I think. Double check. It did work. You can't see it with the glare, the sun. Uh, there's the three zeros in front of the three and then the point. Right. That's that's the number that we're going to use there. 0 0.00034. Yeah, we'll just drop off the zero at the end. This one is equals. And so this is a, I didn't write it down, but this is a two-tail test. That is a two-tail test. It's my thinking cloud, sorry. Thinking cloud, thinking cloud, sorry. That's my thinking cloud. I was gonna do the sound. So you divided that number by 100 and that's how you got all those zeros? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Instead of instead of moving the decimal two places to the left, I, I I sometimes I lose track. Like when you move it two places to the left, I lose track of the number of zeros. 
So I said, you know what? Screw that. I'm just going to get this number and then divide by 100. And it automatically changes it for me in my calculator. So that's how I don't, I don't lose track of the number of zeros when I move it two places to the left. It does it automatically. So it's always, you always get your, your, your number in front of the decimal, in front of the percentage. Get the, front, the number in front of the percentage and then divide it by 100. And it'll change it for you. Who would have thought, right? Who would have thought? I believe it was, uh, I think it was uh, A-Rod who created this. A-Rod. It's no longer with J-Lo no more. It's Ben Affleck. I hate Ben Affleck. All right. Now we are ready for step it to. I'm, 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 I'm surprised that I can draw a rectangle. That's weird. Significance claimed. Proportion, did I say proportion right? Proportion, proportion. Uh, sample size, I couldn't remember. And number of successes. Successes, is that how you pronounce it? Successes? Number of successes. successes. All right, people, so, um, all right, now, when you do your drop down menu, there is no symbol for that one. Yeah, I already talked to Bill Gates. We had tacos the other day. And I told him, hey, sir, you don't have a option to pick this button on the drop down. He goes, yes, 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 there is. I just put the word not equal on there. And so I left. Well, and then he didn't pay for the bill. So I pay for it. But you're going to put not equals. That's the only option that they have on that menu bar. I can show you all in a little bit. It has not equals. It should have had, there is a symbol that has not equals. He just lazy bum. Instead, he wants to go in the rocket. No, no, he doesn't want to go in the rocket. It was the other doofus. Bessels, is that his name? Mr. Bessels? <laughs> Bessels. I think he's Hispanic. All right, let's see. All right, who can find me my significance? Significance. What is my significance? Who can find it? Who can find it? Who can find it? In case they don't give you the significance, people, you always use the default as 0 0.05 if they don't give it to you. But I think in this one they gave us they gave us the uh, significance. Oh wow, look at that one. It's 0 0.005. Right? Uh, claim proportion. I got to use the number that was given in my uh, statement. It was, uh, I believe it was 0 0.30, then a 3.4. Sample size. I believe the sample size is 420,095. And my number of successes is 135. Y'all see it? Yep. You gotta read these problems carefully, but after a while you, you'll, you'll start to see the numbers appear that are on there. Then you'll start talking to yourself and then you'll have conversations and that's no point. That's schizophrenia. That's right. That's what oxycodone is for. So there you go. I have I have all my numbers. Dot 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 dot. Don't put a comma. I had to put a comma, but don't put a comma. It just the uh, stat does not like the comma. Don't put comma. I should have erased it. Ah. I don't know for some reason stat does is not is real picky about how you enter the number. So don't put a comma in there. Okay, here we go. Let's plug it in. 
Like a blade air freshener. Plug it in, plug it in. Look, I told you, look. See how it says not equals? Okay, of course that's not equals. All good? Did I type everything right? Should I hit evaluate or did I mess up? Ah, look, I messed up. This was supposed to be zero, zero, five. And this one should have an extra zero. Eee, oh, ladies, what happened? You guys are asleep. No me digas. You gotta make sure that you write down the numbers right. Otherwise, it's gonna be wrong. Now, see you next semester. See you next semester. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But... All right, there you go. Now I have everything correct. I'm going to write down all my uh, results. Sample proportion test statistic critical critical Z and my P value. All right. Zero point zero zero three two test statistics negative zero point six five five four seven and critical is plus or minus two point eight zero seven zero four and the p value is zero point five one two one No yawning, guys. No yawning. <laughs> Ladies, this is this is like poetry and statistics. You know how in English they write poetry? This is ours. This is our poetry. We should all go like this. Every time we do a problem. To wear a hat and a little cigarette. All right. Questions on anything, ladies? Questions on anything? It's supposed to be a five. Questions on anything? Are y'all comfortable with the first three steps? What does that little sign mean on the critical bleed, whatever? That one? Yeah. Plus or minus? Oh, that's a good question. Who said that? Who said that? That was a good question. Who said that? Me. Ask them. You, you go. <laughs> you sounded confident when you said that. Me. <laughs> I. I'm gonna miss you when you all finish the class. All right. Let me tell you something about that. That's a good. That's a good. Good question. So, because this, if you look back at the problem, all right, this was a, what kind of a tail test is this? This is a two tail test. So graphically, when you graph it, you're cutting your graph into two parts. This part is the 2.80704, and this part is, that's a negative, and this is the positive. These are your, your critical values that cut off the ends. And what we're trying to do is we want to test this hypothesis. We want to see 
if if the hypothesis statement is correct, it will fall in the white region. If we if we uh, we don't uh, believe it's going to fall within those shaded regions, that's the purpose of it. So graphically, you have it's a two tail test. So this this critical value is doing a cutoff. So if you were to do a left tail, if this was a left tail, it would just be that part. If it's right tail, it would just be that part. So your, your goal is to determine whether or not this hypothesis is true. So you want, you want the numbers to fall in the white area. That's the acceptable region. If it is, then this hypothesis statement is correct. If it falls in the ends, then it is not. So yeah, that you'll see that. You'll see, you'll see the critical value is positive or negative. It's all related to the two the tail test that you're dealing with. That's what that that's what that means. That's a good observation, ma'am. Good observation. That was a beautiful graph, too. Just let me know. Too bad I had to erase it. But it was beautiful, wasn't it? Had style, pizzazz, yet chic. But yeah, good questions. Good questions. So yeah, you'll you'll end up getting your critical values plus or minus whenever you all end up with a two-tail test. And I think in Statis it has a graph of it. I wonder if I can share with that with y'all. Let me see. Does it does it have a graph? Let me see. Oh snap! Look at that. It has a plot. Holy smoke, look at that. It has a graph of it. Well, son of a biscuit. You see those reds? That, they're the reds. Dang, just like mine, the reds. What the frog? It is the best graph. Thank you, Enriqueta. Your grade just went up from a D to a D plus. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my picture was much better. Just, you know, I don't want to. I don't show off, but yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's the graph. There's the graph. Now, you guys can see uh, it, it gave it away, but look where the blue line fell. The blue line fell right in the middle. So that tells us something. So uh, we can't, I can't disclose yet because we're not ready for this. We're not ready for step four and step five yet, but we're getting there. Actually, we're going to get to it now. But yeah, that's that's the the purpose of, of, of that. Graphically, you can you can plot it and see where your where your results are going to indicate whether you accept the hypothesis or not. All right. So, are we ready? Are we ready for step four and step five? I think I can do it in twenty five minutes. Are you all ready for step four and step five? Any questions from one, two, or three? One, two, I don't think we're going to get to finish seven, eight, eight, uh, eight, three today. We'll have to do that Monday. But it won't take as long as what we had to go through today. We, it, when we do eight, three, it's going to be almost identical, ladies, almost identical. The only difference when we do eight, three is we don't do P's, we do mu's. And then this part, you're going to be asked to find different things. This will be the same. But we'll do that. When is the final? Uh, I think it's in uh, I think it's in July. Next week. So yeah, it'll be next week. So when you all submit your exam number three on Monday, I will have the final exam ready for you to have access to that, that Monday. You will have until Friday midnight to complete it. There's only 10 questions. Why is there 10 questions? Because I want to sleep and I want to grade fast. Well, because grades are due Saturday. So I have to have your test before midnight, 11.59. So by, by next week, you will know how to do eight, two, eight, three, and 10. There's only three sections for the final. This is part of it. So 
So yeah, so you'll have to at least Friday. My Saturday too. I'm sorry. Our homework has to be turned in by Friday at midnight. Yes, all your homeworks have to be turned in by next week Friday. Yeah, because otherwise, no bueno. Yep. Oh, you noticed. You noticed some of y'all had y'all had happy faces on your homework homework that weren't turned in, right? They're not happy faces, people. They're zeros. <laughs> I wish there were happy faces. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready for step four and five? All right. I'm gonna go back to number 13. We're gonna fill in. We're gonna wing it. Okay. Now you're ready. Okay, so here's the thing with uh, step four and step five, okay? So step four, there's two different options that you can choose, okay? So let me show you on the handout uh, what I'm looking at, all right? So on the handout, if you scroll down, we already did two, there's three, we already did those. Do not round any of the numbers. All right, here is step four. There are two options that you all can take. You can do, you can do the I'm looking for a comment. You can do simple conclusion or I'm sorry. You can do, I'm trying to erase the same thing. Why doesn't let me do it? Cosas. Okay, I'm trying to highlight it. All right, critical value or p value? I didn't do, let me do that. Am I sharing it? I am sharing it, right? Okay, it's called critical value method or the p value method. It doesn't matter which one you do, you both get the same results. Okay, now. If you choose to do the critical value method, you're going to use this formula. It's not letting me erase. Uh, okay, I don't know why it's acting stupid. Why the heck is it not working? All right, critical value. This is the formula that you're going to use if you're going to do the critical value method. All right. So do you do you all know what these these little lines that are in between the where you have TS and the CV? You know what those lines are called? Anyone know? Use it in math. You don't know what it's called? Anyone? 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 They're called absolute values. Do you know what absolute values do to a number? I wish we can put these these absolute values on people that drive in the expressway because there's all they're always mad, right? They make things positive. That's what they do. All right, so I don't know why this thing is not cooperating. I wanted to take off the highlights. I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Oh, I know. I can hit undo. 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Hold on. Close current tab. Okay, hold on. Let me uh let me open it up again. For some reason it's not it's not a uh, no function for some reason. I didn't pay my bill. You guys didn't pay your bill. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. So there is the formula that we're going to be using is this one. 
Okay. What is TS? TS, not TS, that's, that's your aunt. TS is your test statistic. And your CV is your critical Z. You get those two numbers uh, from step three. I will show those to you all. But in a minute, I'll show you all that. But what you're going to do is you're going to plug in the numbers inside the absolute values. And what happens is they, the both numbers come out positive. So you want to know if the left number is greater than the right number. If it's true, if it's true, you write down reject H0. If it's false, you are going to write fail to reject. All right. So either this statement is true or false. If it's true, you write that. If it's false, you write that. All right. So let me show you how it works. So I'm going to write it down on my paper, the uh, formula. Absolute value of TS is greater than CV. That, that formula is stuck. You cannot change it. It is stuck. It, doesn't, it never changes the other direction. It's, that's how it is. The Greek, the Greek mythology gods created this. So here is the formula. So you're going to get your TS. Now your TS, this is your TS. You're gonna get this number and you're gonna plug it in. Come on, you stupid thing. What happened? Did I use it up already? Son of a biscuit. I think I broke it. All right, you get the picture. All right, 1.09, wing it, 514. I think I ran out of it. And then your CV, this is your CV. This is your CV. Your critical Z is your CV. 1.64485. And then what you're going to do is whatever the number is, regardless if it's positive or negative, it comes out positive. Now, what I'm going to suggest, you don't have to do this, but um, I am just going to drop the, I'm going to keep the first three numbers, 109. You don't have to do the rounding. You just drop, drop the last digits. And oh, God, leave. I didn't mean to uh, put, put the absolute value somewhere. That didn't broke. All right. I'm just going to make it positive. 1.09. I'm going to keep the greater than, and I'm going to drop the last three digits and put 1.64. And I always refer to gas prices. Okay. It's like gas, right? So I'm going to look at the statement and say, is a dollar nine greater than a dollar 64? Is this true, ladies, or false? Is that a true statement or a false statement? Is a dollar nine greater than a dollar sixty four? No. It is false, right? A dollar nine is not bigger than a dollar sixty four. Shoot, I would buy gas for a dollar eighty, a dollar nine. It's false. So because that statement is false, I am going to write. What am I going to write? 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 I'm going to write fail to reject. I'm going to write that statement. Fail to reject. It's false. That statement was false. I'm going to write this number. I'm going to write that statement right next to it. I'm going to write it big. Not big, but I'm going to write fail to reject 
A0 and underline it. We're going to need that, that result to answer step five. Okay. So you plug in the numbers, take out the, make them positive and cut the last few digits and make them into money so you can understand the, the result, right? And then you test it. You read it left to right. Is that statement true? Is this number greater than that other number? If it's true, you write that. If it's false, you write that. And then you write fail to reject. And that's how you do the critical value method. If you use the other method, this one, the p-value method, okay? You can, you can use that method if you want. I need to erase it. It's not um, allowing me to highlight more than one item. Oh, well. You're going to use that formula if you use the p-value method. How does the p-value method work? All right, well, the p-value method works like this. You write down the formula. I'm gonna write it down. P-value is less than or equal to, it looks like a fish. I see it, it's an alpha, okay? You're going to plug in the numbers. You're gonna plug in the number for the p-value, that number, and you're gonna plug in that number. That number right there, that symbol represents your significance number. Do you remember where we got the significance number from? I didn't realize significance was a freaking long number, long name. Significance, you're gonna get that from step two. Uh, step two. So you plug in the numbers. If it's true, you reject. If it's false, you fail to reject. You gotta read it from left to right, ladies. You gotta read it from left to right. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how this one works. Paper. All right, here we go. Okay. So P value. Okay. P value is in step three. You see it? There's your P value. You write that number right there. Zero point one three six seven three symbol. Your significance, this is your significance number. This was at the very beginning. There is your significance. You're going to write that number 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And you can do it again. I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop the last three digits and just keep the first the first two, and then you read it, and then you read it from left to right, okay? Is 13 cents, is 13 cents smaller than five cents? No, that's correct. It is false, so what do we write? We write fail to reject H0. So you get to choose, ladies. You can either choose to do the critical value method or you prefer to do the p-value method. Which one was easier for you all? That one, plug it into the formulas or dealing with, dealing with dollars or dealing with cents. Which one was easier for you all? Because it doesn't matter. If you're going to go in the science field, I suggest you do the p-value. Just letting you know. 
if you go into the nursing UPI. But either one is correct. You can see that both of them end up giving you the same result. So it doesn't matter to me. I, I, I don't have a preference. I like both. So you get to pick. You choose. You choose. That one or p-value. It doesn't matter. You pick. Don't do both. Just do one or the other. Because at the end, you're going to end up with the same result. Right? So I would just alternate. That way you all can see how, how it works. Okay? So that's step four. You're going to be you're going to be plugging in the numbers into the formulas, determining whether the statement is true or false. Then is step five. Final conclusion. I was gonna play the I was gonna play the song Final Countdown. You remember that song? I'm not gonna sing it. I'm gonna hurt my voice. Final conclusion. Okay. All right. So to determine the final conclusion, let me show you all what that involves. I'm going to scroll down, and here is the final conclusion. You have four choices to choose from. Okay. There are four final conclusions. It's either going to be number one, number two, number three, or number four. You remember, guys, you remember I went through the Punnett square and I told you about the true positive, true negative. You had the guilty people, the ones that were found guilty, they didn't have proof. Well, this is this is summary of it, right? You you guys really want to get, there's two, there's two, uh, there's two conclusions that you really want to get. If possible, if you can, it would be so cool if you got you got number one or you got number three, right? Let me tell you the difference between them. Number one is saying that you have enough evidence to prove that the claim was totally wrong. That's what number one is. Number three is saying the sample data support the claim. This is saying you have proved that the claim was totally true. So one is totally false, three is totally true. Now, if you end up getting number two or number four, number two is saying you don't have enough information to prove that it is wrong. Number four is saying you don't have enough information to prove that it is correct. If you guys get a number two or number four, there is something wrong with the data. It's probably you don't have enough uh, of a sample to prove that it is wrong or right. So that's what number two and number four is. So if you end up getting a number two, number four, that's telling someone you need to go back to your data. There's something wrong with it. Go recollect and get more numbers. That's what it's saying. But you want to get number one or number three. Hopefully, hopefully. Now, how do you determine it? Well, do you all remember at the very beginning when we were, we were do, writing our statements and I told you all to put a star. I told you to put a star on the statement that was given initially on the problem. Well, that's what this claim is. Where do you have the star? That's what this claim part of it. What is the star line that was given at the beginning? And then there's a second part. What do we conclude from step four? That's this part. Kind of looks like a dog. This was step four. So if you put them together, that will tell you the line that you're going to be writing, okay? So let's go back to our problem and you guys are gonna select. So this is step four, that part, and this is the star that you had, all right? I'm gonna erase it. 
star step four. All right, let's go back to the problem. Where we're doing number 13. Do you remember, ladies, do you remember where do we put the star on problem number 13? Initially, where do we put the star at? We had the star in H1, correct? I had the star in H1. And what did we conclude from step four? From step four, we concluded we fail to reject, right? So I'm looking for a, the H1 and a fail to reject. So we're going to choose, that's correct. I said it was number one. So where do I, I'm gonna to go to my chart step five, right? And I want I want the star in H1 and I want fail to reject. I'm trying to erase. Conley. Why can't I erase? Is it because of my age, ladies? What do y'all think? Don't you dare answer that. Cosas. No me digas. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So I have, I had a star in H1. So there, it's either going to be number, number three or number four, right? <laughs> it's number three and number four, right? Because I had a star in H1. I can't take one or two because my star was not in H0. So it's either number one, it's number three or number four. Well, it looks like it's going to be number four, right? I had my star in H1 and I failed to reject. And so here's what you do. I'm gonna pick number four. So here's what you do, folks. And you're not gonna hear it often in other classes, but you're gonna hear it here. You're gonna plagiarize. You're going to plagiarize. You're going to copy. Oh, you're gonna da, 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 da. Why does anyone erase? You're gonna copy the statement that's stated right on number four. You're gonna write it word for word. Copy this line as it appears. Copy it, write it down. You're gonna write, you're gonna write, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, y'all see, I just copied that line. I just copied it exactly how it appears. Exactly how it appears, I, even though I don't know how to write a freaking line. Son of a biscuit. No, ladies, I haven't been drinking. But you're gonna write it, you're gonna write it exactly how it appears. Just write it, copy it, copy it, right? And then you see where it says that, okay? You see where it says that? You're gonna go back to the problem, go back to the original problem, and you're gonna copy. You remember where it said claim that? You're gonna write, you're gonna copy exactly the phrase right after the word claim that. You're gonna just copy it exactly how it appears in the word problem. Let's see if I can find it. What was it? What was it, number 13? Uh, where is it at? Number 13, where is, the, where, is the, where is the term that in my problem number 13? This was 13, right? 13, ah, oh, went too fast. Uh, 13, looking for that. Where is that? All right, there it is, that. You're gonna, you're gonna copy that and stick it to that sentence that I just wrote on my paper. You're gonna write more than 20% of oxyclean. Is that oxyclean? No, I'm sorry, it's oxycodone. Shoot. Oxy, what's that oxy, oxyclean? 
oxyco co I don't know how to freaking spell oxycodone. Oxy cotton users develop nausea. Nausea. Right. Copy, copy. You copy the line from my handout and then you copy the wording on the sentence. So that it appears like this, ladies. It appears like this. Just ignore my scratching because I couldn't freaking spell oxy. But yeah, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that more than 20% of oxycodone users develop nausea. You copied the statement from my handout, and then you copy the statement that's attached to the problem after the word that. You put them together. That way, your conclusion is not based on your opinion. You are using words that someone else provided you with. So they can't tell you, hey, that's, that's, your opinion is not, no, 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 I'm not using my opinion. I'm using the words that you gave me and I'm using those words to make my conclusion. So you base it off of their, their wording. Make sense? I'm crying, people, I'm crying. So see how it says not sufficient evidence? Look, look at the, look at the data size. 227 was not enough. So there was something wrong with the, with the problem. So. That's telling the people, hey, your results didn't prove it was whether it was correct or right or wrong. You need to go back and fix that number. Go collect more data. That was not enough. That's what it's saying. You didn't have enough sufficient sample evidence. Boom. All right. Shall we stop here? Or you want me to do one more and then I'll, we'll do four and five real quick or wait till Monday? What do y'all think? You guys are probably eating already, right? <laughs> it's messed up. Okay, someone says to do number 19 quick, like fast. Okay, yes, 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 yes. I'll do it quick. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let's do let's do 19 quick. Okay, now it should be quick now because you're gonna tell me. You're gonna tell me whether or not you want me to do, do you wanna do step four? Do you want to do a critical value or do you want to do a p-value? You ladies pick. Give me one. P-value or critical value? Pick one. Anyone. Pick one. Anyone. Pick one. Excellent. Critical. All right, let's do critical. All right, so we'll do critical value. All right, so here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my formula. Okay, there's my formula. I'm gonna plug in the numbers. My TS, there's my TS, <laughs> my TS, negative 1.11117, my TS. My TS is probably watching the price is right or something. CV is negative, son of a biscuit, negative 1.6. Four four eight five. There's my there's my uh there's my CV, right? I'm going to take off the negative and remove the last few digits, so this becomes one point one one. And I want to know if is a dollar eleven greater than a dollar sixty four. Is this true or false, ladies? True or false? Is the gas price of $1.11 higher than $1.64? False. It's not, right? So we fail to reject HO. You, let, you read it left to right. Is that true? Dollar eleven is that greater than a dollar sixty four? No, it's false. So you fail to reject. 
And now we can do step five. Where do we have a star at, ladies? At the very beginning, where did I have my star? I had my star in H1, right? I had a star in H1. And my step four, what do we say in step four? I said we failed to reject. Okay, and so which one do we pick from our choices, our four choices? I need to erase it. I think it's gonna be the same one. Son of a biscuit. Are you serious? I have a claim in H1 and I failed to reject. Oh my gosh, it's the same. I got the same result. Well, what do you know? Pues que cosas. Boom. Yeah, it's number four. Huh. Huh. All right, what do I write? Well, I'm going to write this statement. I'm going to write this statement. I'm going to write that statement. There is not... There is snot, did I say that? There is snot, there is snot sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, 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 that. That, 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 that. What am I we doing? 19. I gotta go to 19. That, that. All right, gotta find the word, claim that, and then write after that. I'm gonna write it. There it is. Boom. Such polygraph results are correct, less than 80% of the time. So I'm gonna attach that sentence next to the word that in my paper. Such that. No, such polygraph results are correct. 80, less than, sorry, less than 80% of the time. And you can see again that the data values are low. Yeah, that's why that's why the, we're not getting a conclusive result. There's not sufficient sample evidence. Of course, we'll look at the data size. We only have 98. That's not enough to prove. You need you need more. That's why it's coming out like that. That's why. Right. So you're just copying copy the statement from the step five and then attaching it from the problem you just connect them connect them like jlo and ben Affleck. you just connect maybe not maybe not connect but yeah you know what I mean. you know what i mean jelly bean all right uh we need to do one more shall we do the 21 23 that way we can just do um uh, get the feel for it. Twenty-three is the last one. All right. How do you all want to do number? How do you want to do step four for number twenty-three? You want to do critical or p-value? You make the call. You make the call. Which one do we pick? You like critical value, didn't y'all? Fine. Let's do critical value. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, calm down, calm down. <laughs> yeah, because you, you it works in chingas, right? This thing works in chingas if you do critical value. I agree. I agree. You're gonna go make your sopita, right? All right, so here we go. CB. All right, plug it in. What is your TS? What is your TS? 
Mine is gonna recline watching TV. Six, five, five, four, seven. See if I can read some of your minds, ladies. You all are saying, why did he make him positive? Uh, because that's what the absolute values do. They make things positive. So if someone's mean to you, like your brother or your sister, you want to go ahead and put them in an absolute value box because they come out positive. Or you get your mom pissed at you, right? Put her in the absolute value box. They come out positive. Always. It's true. It's true. 2.8. Yeah, what do you do with that? Right? So they come out positive. Even, even though it has a plus or minus, it always comes out positive. These numbers always come out positive. And just cut the number off so that you have you have change. All right. So it's 65 cents greater than 280. No. You gotta be kidding me. Again, it's false, fail to reject. H zero, son of a biscuit. I have yet to have one that's true. Isn't that weird? That's weird. We got picked some weird ass numbers there, ladies to same. Good, there you go. There's, there's the numbers. I plugged them in. There's my CV, there's my, my CV, my TS. I plugged them in, bop, bop, bop. Make them positive, cut the numbers, test, left to right. 65 cents is greater than 280. No, that's wrong. It's false. Fail to reject. All right. Where did I have my star, ladies? Oh, no. It's going to come up the same. I had my star in H1. Step four. What did I say? Step four, fail to reject H0. So it's going to be a number four again. Son of a biscuit. It's going to be a number four again. Hey, cosas. Why did y'all ladies pick that? Pick those problems. They're all coming out to be number four. There is not, it's, it's a coincidence. I'm serious. It is called coincidence. Mother class, they they picked the right ones and then we did a mixture of them. We were all we were laughing. Ah, ha, ha. And no, y'all had to do, you had to pick these. Sample evidence to support the claim that. Uh, what am I going to put after the word that, ladies? I got to go to number 23. Quickly, quickly. What was 23 talking about? Oh, the cell phones. Uh, I got to find the word that. Claim that. Claim. There it is, right there. Oh, shoot. I got to write all of that. No way. Oh. All right. I have to write all that after that. Cell phone users develop cancer of the brain or nervous system at a rate different from the rate of 0. 0.340% for people who do not use cell phones. All right. Okay, I wrote it down. Oh, look at that. My hand is bleeding. Yeah, don't don't write that. You're gonna write, you're gonna write the words. I I'm the cook. I, I don't have to. I'm the chef. I don't have to. I'm, I'm excluded. <laughs> but you better not do that on your test. <laughs> or on your homework. 
So there you go. That's that's the uh, that's the whole procedures of it. So um, I'm I'm reading your minds. I'm reading your minds. I'm thinking that you may have difficulty with step four. Um, no, maybe not step four. If you stick with if you stick with critical value, I think you'll be all right. I'm thinking you're gonna have you're gonna get stuck in step five. I don't know. Ladies, which one confused did you? Which one confused did you? Is that was that a right word? Which one confused you? Is this like in warp speed? Okay. You ladies are good. Yes? Or when it's a negative and you didn't put a negative on zero points, it's what? Oh, the negative? Yeah. Yeah, you remember, whatever your, whatever your test statistic is, plug it into the absolute values. And just all you have to do is just take off the negatives. These, these numbers always end up being positive. And that, that number was calculated on stat disk. So whatever the stat disk number gave us, that's what you plug into the absolute values. Did that help, Aspen? So it's always, so it just doesn't matter if it's negative or what? Correct. That is correct. Regardless of whether the number inside is positive or negative, your absolute values make them always positive. Like, like, like do you know anyone in the family that's always happy? Who's always happy in your family? Are you always happy in your family? No. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, well, whatever. Yeah, they're always they're always happy. Yeah, you, <laughs> you put them in the box, they always come out happy. All right, Desiree says step three. You got stuck in step three. I mean step two, with the drop down menu. Okay, good. Quite all right. So when you do your drop down menu, all right. You you always look for this the, the statements. Your second statement will always provide you the the drop down menu uh, inequality symbol. So always it's always that symbol. It's never the top one because the top one the H zero it's always equals greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. The drop down menu does not give you that option to pick those. So you're only asked to choose from three. It's always going to be not equal, greater than, or less than. And those are always the H1s. So your drop down menu choice is always going to be your H1 uh, symbol, always. Okay. Regardless, if you have the star here or there, it doesn't matter. You always choose that one, that one for your choice, for your drop down menu. Okay, always, always your H1. Did that help, Desi? Okay, it's your two. Yes, all right. Anything else, ladies, you all have? We've done we're, when we when we come back Monday, we'll do we'll do one more from beginning to end. All right, just to refresh your memory. And you're gonna see how that's going to play a factor when we do eight three. It's all gonna be the same thing. You're gonna do you're gonna do that, 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 that. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. The same, same procedures, but a little bit tweaked. So you will become experts at it. Next time, I'm going to do the problems, but I'm going to have to do the problems uh, landscaped, right? Because it's getting kind of difficult. You know, I'm running, I'm running out of space when I do it portrait. So I'm going to start doing them landscaped so y'all can see the flow. I'm going to go step one, step two, step three. Step four, step five. So you can see it all in one page. All right. 
Bueno. Hasta la Northwest Vista, baby. Acabamos. Vamos a comer. What are we going to go eat, Natalie? What are you making today? Why is everything on me? Because <laughs> you're very, very talkative. <laughs> what are y'all making today? Y'all making anything like sopita or something? I don't know. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Bye. <laughs>